In this video, I'm going to cover a basic, typical installation of Windows Server 2025 Server Core. The detailed steps are similar and can be used for Windows Server 2022. For an advanced installation demonstration, see Windows Server 2022 Advanced Installation. We'll cover installation, initial configuration, Windows updates, enabling the SSH server, joining an Active Directory domain, and remote management. Windows Server 2025 now sports a new setup routine, but the steps are the same as with previous versions. At the first two screens, we select our preferred language and keyboard layout. At the third screen, we have to explicitly acknowledge and agree that we're doing a clean install by clicking the checkbox. Notice, however, in the lower left that we can select the previous version of the setup routine used by Windows Server 2022 and earlier. However, for this demo, we're going to continue with the new routine. Next, we select between server core, which we're installing, or server with the desktop experience. And of course, we mostly read and agree to the licensing terms. Mostly. As with previous versions, we select our target disk for installation. At the Ready to Install screen, verify your choices, click Install, and enjoy the pretty blue screen. Enter a strong password for the local administrator account. Select which level of data to send at the Send Diagnostic Data to Microsoft screen. By default, for Windows Server 2025 and 2022, the Server Configuration tool, as config, will automatically launch with each login. Select three to add another local administrator. Enter a username and password. You are only prompted to enter the password once, so be sure it is correct. We'll log in with this account later. Type 9 to change your time zone. Type 8 to set up your network. Type the number that represents your network adapter. Type 1 to set the adapter address. Select DHCP or static. Here, we're selecting static. Enter IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Press Enter to continue. Now we have to set the DNS servers. Type 8 again. Select your network adapter. Type 2 and enter the DNS servers. Press Enter to continue. Hit 7 to enable remote desktop if necessary. Hit 1 to allow clients using modern RDP protocols with NLA. Windows Server Core must be remotely administered via Windows Remote Management or other tools. Select 4 for Remote Management. Leave Remote Management enabled. By default, Windows Server disabled pain replies otherwise known as echo request. Hit 3 to enable ping replies. Change the computer name, hit number 2, and restart the computer. Log in as the local administrator. For Windows updates, select 5 to choose how to install updates. We can select from automatic, Download only or manual. In this example, I'm leaving the default download only selected. Select 6 to actually install updates if automatic was not selected earlier in the Update Settings section. Windows Server 2022 Server Core differs slightly. In this example, I'm selecting A for all. When the available updates are presented, 
select A. Restart if necessary following updates. Since Open SSH Server is included and installed with Windows Server 2025, you can enable it in Server Core via PowerShell. For Windows Server 2022, you can add Open SSH Server using the Add Windows Capability commandlet. Log in as the other local administrator. Hit Escape twice and select the other user account. Log in. Again, select which diagnostic data to send to Microsoft. Hit 15 to exit to PowerShell. Use the Get Dash Service commandlet to get the status of the SSHD service. Start the service with the Start Dash Service commandlet. Set the service to start automatically. Check to ensure the local firewall is allowing inbound SSH traffic over port 22 with the get dash net firewall rule commandlet. Change the rule to allow inbound SSH for the domain and private profiles. Use the get dash net TCP connection commandlet to check for listening ports. Type exit to get back to server configuration tool. For most Windows Server core installations, the server will be joined to an Active Directory domain. Log in as either of the local administrators. Select one followed by the letter D. Enter the domain name. Since you entered the domain name, you only need to enter a domain username that has rights to join a computer to the domain. Enter the domain user's password. If the server is already properly named, hit N. Otherwise, hit Y to rename according to your naming convention. Hit Y to restart the server. After the server reboots, log in as a domain user. Hit Escape twice and select Other User. Enter the username and password of the domain user. And yes, again, select the type of diagnostic data to send to Microsoft. The server will now show that it is a member of the domain. Hit 12 to log off. As recommended by Microsoft, Windows Server, Server Core, should be managed remotely. In this example, we are using a domain joined Windows 11 client with Remote Server Administration Tools, RSAT, and Windows Admin Center installed. In later videos, I will cover RSAT and Windows Admin Center installations. Open RSAT Server Manager. At the Server Manager dashboard, click Add Other Servers to Manage. Click Find Now to see all manageable servers. Here, I'm going to add our Windows Server 2025 Server Core and the Domain Controller. In the left pane, click All Servers. Notice that the roles of the servers will start to populate. Select the server to manage. Right click to see all available options. Scroll down Server Manager, and you can see relevant event logs. You can start, stop, restart services. You can start, stop performance counters and you can add or remove roles and features. Click the Tools menu to see all of the available RSAT and management tools. The premier remote management tool that Microsoft is advocating is Windows Admin Center. Open Windows Admin Center. 
In the upper left, click Add. Click Add in the Service box. Select Search Active Directory. Enter an asterisk and click Search to see all servers. Select the target servers and click the Add button. And if prompted, enter credentials. In the connection list, click the server name. The left pane of the window displays the tools available to manage the server. Although I will cover Windows Admin Center in detail in a later video, there are a couple areas I want to highlight. Click PowerShell. Windows Admin Center will open an interactive remote PowerShell session. Click Remote Desktop. Read and acknowledge the dialog box prior to leaving the remote PowerShell session. Click the Certificate box. Click Confirm. Enter the domain user's password and click Connect to establish a remote desktop connection. In the left pane, scroll up and click Settings. Click Power Configuration and select your desired power plan. Since the Open SSH server is installed, we can use it to manage Windows Server remotely, even from a Linux client. Open a terminal. Establish an SSH connection using a domain account. If the first time connecting, accept the key and enter the user's password. After making a successful SSH connection, you are placed at a command prompt on the remote system. To get a rich management environment, type PowerShell. To immediately enter a PowerShell session, when establishing an SSH connection, append PowerShell to the command. Now we can use any of the native PowerShell commandlets to manage the server, such as get Windows feature and get net firewall rule. Likewise, you can establish an SSH connection from a Windows client or server. Since the domain name is already in the DNS search suffix, we only need the computer name as a target. Use caution when using a PowerShell session via SSH as the prompt does not identify the remote system. To protect against issuing commands to the wrong system, use the below function to change the session's prompt to reflect the remote system's name. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.